So the other day I was trying to pick a good space movie to watch and I ended up watching Pandorum. And after watching about 30 minutes of it, I couldn't understand why I never hear anyone talking about how good this movie is. It was a dark, atmospheric, mystery horror movie in space and I was ready to fall in love with a hidden gem that I had assumed everyone had just forgotten for some reason. Now remember, this is how I felt after watching 30 minutes of it. But as soon as I had that thought, it felt like it turned into a completely different movie. It goes from being a creepy mystery flick in space to an over-the-top action movie with a race against the clock trope that kills all the atmosphere and mood that it built up. I get the feeling that this movie wanted to be like Event Horizon mixed with aliens, but what it really felt like was Alien Covenant mixed with Ghost of Mars. But even though these things look really, really stupid, and there's way too much karate for a creepy space movie, Pandorum did give a really great explanation of what happened. And it was such a great science fiction explanation that it ended up explaining the purpose of the black goo. I believe it's the accelerator. The synthetic enzyme in our feeding tubes that would help our bodies adjust and adapt to the environmental conditions on Tarnas. Now, I know the way everyone feels about Prometheus is kind of mixed, but that's only because a lot of you thought it was going to be some xenomorph origin story. And it's really your fault that we got Alien Covenant because these new movies were supposed to be about the engineers. Prometheus was a perfect intro movie to a trilogy and it's honestly one of the best sci-fi movies ever made. Now it's not Terminator 2 or The Thing or even Alien, but something that most people don't realize about sci-fi movies is they're supposed to make us ask questions. Was Cobb still dreaming? Is Deckard a replicant? Did The Thing survive? Was Total Recall real or just part of a simulation program? Now, of course people like me love trying to find answers to these questions, but that's the point of a good science fiction story. It's supposed to explain just enough to tell the story and leave enough questions unanswered so the fans can debate and theorize and get lost in the possibilities. And because science fiction is literally fictional science, most of the questions we have can never really be logically answered. It's the reason something like the Plumbus is so interesting or the Three Seashells from Demolition Man. That's what good sci-fi is. But a lot of people didn't like Prometheus because most people don't like being forced to think while watching movies. They want everything explained in easy to understand scenes and they want the music and characters to tell them exactly how they should feel and what they should think. That's why the same stupid jump scare horror movies come out every year and make a ton of money. It's because they're predictable and familiar with generic plots and characters. And they don't need to create an atmosphere or make the audience think. All they need is sudden loud music and a creepy face popping up a few times and everyone leaves the theater happy. It's like the question, is Vickers an android? I don't even know why this is a real question. The movie tries to make her seem mysterious and the other characters even question if she's a real person, but it's pretty obvious that she's a human. The very first scene she's in, she's doing her best Vasquez impersonation and we can clearly see that she's sweating and she's struggling to finish the last few push-ups. It'd be pretty pointless to program an android to sweat and pretend to struggle when the androids we see hundreds of years later are very robotic and they know they're androids. And Waylon obviously doesn't want Vickers on this mission, so if she was an android, he could have just made her stay back on Earth. But this is exactly why I think Prometheus is one of the greatest sci-fi movies ever. It introduces us to so many things and so many interesting questions, but it gives us just enough to be able to come up with our own sensible explanations and ideas about the story. Now, there are a lot of things that you can say are wrong with it and a lot of shots copied from other Aliens movies, but overall, as a science fiction story, Prometheus is really good. I need to know why. What did we do wrong? Why do you hate us? Okay, let me ask you a question. Why do you think the engineers wanted to kill us? What I'm asking is, why do you think this is something that they were going to do? There isn't anything in this movie that says the engineers wanted to kill humans. Just think about it. The only character that had any reason to think this is David. But where did he get the idea from? And I know this is a lot of foreplay just to get to the goo, but I gotta address everything because there's a lot of unanswered questions in this movie that I think are just misunderstandings. So let's look at the scene where David first came up with the idea that the engineers were planning on killing us. He sees the engineers preparing to leave, and they're looking at a map of the planets and the solar systems, and David recognizes Earth so he pulls it down to have a closer look at it. 
And then when the system shuts down, Earth is the planet on the dashboard near the engineer control panel. This is where Davy got the idea from. Open and shut case, Johnson. Well, not so fast. Remember when I said most people want movies to tell them what to think and how to feel? Well, this scene is exactly what I'm talking about because it told you what to think even though your own eyes were telling you something different. Let's look at it again. The engineer's looking at a hologram map of space and there's a planet right in front of him that's clearly not Earth. And maybe Earth was the planet near the control panel because David pulled it down to have a look at it. Maybe. It was just like a search history. And any planet you pull down becomes the highlighted planet closest to the control panel. So the only reason Shaw thought the engineers wanted to destroy humans is because this is what David thought. Why? Sometimes to create, one must first destroy. But the idea that the black goo was a weapon really came from the fact that anything we don't automatically understand has to be dangerous. If the black goo isn't a bubblegum flavored cure for cancer, then it must be a bioweapon made to destroy humanity. But think about this. If the black goo was a weapon, then why did they have some of it sitting in a room right on top of the dirt? And I know a lot of these ideas about this movie came after Alien Covenant came out, but Ridley Scott is obviously too old to be making movies because he didn't even remember what happened in the last movie. So drinking a drop of it does this, getting pregnant by it does this, getting baptized in it does this, but raining it down from the sky turns it into a swarm of angry black bees that turns you into a burned statue? <laughs> what? It's like we see David open up one of these so-called weapons in Prometheus. How the f*** does dropping this out of a ship make these glass bottles open up and turn into a swarm of bees? And some of you might say that the engineers hated us because the one that woke up just started killing everyone. But just imagine if you woke up from a 2,000 year long nap and a bunch of aliens were screaming at you and asking you hella questions right away. I need to know why! What did we do wrong? Why do you hate us? This movie starts with the crew waking up and needing some time to fully get their shit together, but they couldn't even let this guy take a piss and drink some coffee first. Maybe that's why he flipped out and killed everyone. Now, I'm gonna explain what the black goo is next, but I just gotta make sure you're all lubed up first, so here's five quick explanations that make way more sense than the black goo being a weapon. Maybe they were trying to terraform LV-223 and the black goo helped to fertilize and evolve the ecosystem. This is why the containers were sitting in a room on the dirt floors, because they wanted the worms and bacteria to get on it so it could evolve. Maybe it was used to evolve the human mind, but they had to wait for us to be mentally advanced enough to understand it. This is why they left the constellation map, so when our technology had improved enough to travel to LV-223, they would know we would be ready to learn more about the black goo. Maybe it was just toxic waste, and they were planning on getting rid of it. It could have been a failed formula, or maybe it was spoiled or contaminated, and maybe these jars were in this room because the containers were leaky and they didn't want the stuff spilling inside of the ship. Maybe it was something that they harvested on LV-223 like oil, and maybe they were taking it to another place to refine it and process it into fuel or medicine or something that was important to their species. Maybe this room was like a wine cellar and the black goo had to ripen under certain conditions before it can be used and the sample that David took wasn't ready yet and this is why it had such negative effects. These are just a few logical explanations that I came up with, but Prometheus actually shows us exactly what the black goo is. You guys remember this thing? Yeah, the space cobra. Do you remember where it came from? It was a little worm that got exposed to the black goo and it turned into this thing in about a day or so. So right there we already know what the black goo does. It causes rapid evolution. Do you guys remember what happened to Holloway after he had just a drop of it? He started to change. Now we never see what the final transformation would have looked like but he was definitely changing into something. And Fifield looked like he was turning into a xenomorph. He was really aggressive, he had increased agility and he even lost his hair and had an elongated skull. And just look at the original design for his transformation. But the biggest proof that the black goo is an evolution accelerator is Shaw. Shaw couldn't get pregnant at first, but Holloway's sperm changed by the black goo fixed her ability to have kids. Because Shaw was pregnant, we see the amniotic sac and the umbilical cord when she pulls the body hugger out. So the body hugger isn't an alien. 
It's just a human that rapidly evolved to survive in a liquid environment. I mean, doesn't this look like something that would live in the water? And this is why she's able to run around hours after having a c-section because the black goo is evolving her body and rapidly fixing it. Just think about this. The engineers are supposed to have the same DNA as humans, right? But if that were true, then why don't they look the same as us? What if the engineers are born looking like humans, but these guys are just the result of using the black goo to change their appearance? What if the black goo was like the spice melange from Dune? If you don't know what the spice is, the spice is a drug that can extend life and unlock special abilities and it's also really addictive and makes your eyes change color if you use it for too long. Now what if the engineers on LV223 used too much of the black goo and got addicted to it? And it caused negative side effects like hallucinations, paranoia, and cardiac arrest. And this is why we see these engineers running, but we never see anything actually chasing them. And the headless one that they find just collapses like he had a stroke or a heart attack or something. What if this whole event was just caused by a drug overdose? Because none of these dead bodies they find have any injuries on them. There were a lot of people that didn't like the Deacon at the end of the movie because it didn't look like the traditional xenomorph that we're used to seeing. Most people wanted this obvious connection to the original movies and a clear explanation to the Xenomorph's origins. But because so many people didn't want to use their own brains, and they wanted the movie to tell them exactly what they should be thinking, they completely missed that this was giving us a clear explanation. The Deacon is the first Xenomorph in this story, even though it didn't look like the ones from the first movie, but everyone must have forgot that Xenomorphs look different depending on the thing that they come out of. There's the dog xenomorph from Alien 3, or the predator one from AVP 2, or even in the comics there's xenomorphs that come out of crocodiles, or wild boars, or even leopards. Now I know the AVP movies and the comics aren't technically canon, but taking some features from the host body has always been a part of the story. And of course the Deacon doesn't look like the original alien because it came out of an engineer and not out of a human. And we never see what a kid xenomorph looks like. All we see is the newborn and the grown-up version. But it doesn't seem like anyone considered that the Deacon would change the way it looked as it got older. The traditional Xenomorph comes out small and white and it ends up being big and black. So if a dog Xenomorph looks different, why wouldn't an engineer Xenomorph look different too? And I'll say it again, I think this movie was a great first movie in a trilogy but I think really Scott forgot the reason these new movies were being made. He probably used the internet for the first time and saw people criticizing it and he just freaked out and said, oh shit, everyone hates the engineers, let's just make a movie about an android killing them off and making the xenomorph in a cave like the first Iron Man suit. He didn't even try to answer anything for the first movie and he basically just killed any chance of a third movie being made. 